All right, I wanted to show you how to do, uh, I don't know what you want to call this. A lot of people like banners. I'm not a fan of banners in churches, but I do like the, the same sort of idea, but on a quilt. I'm not a quilter, but occasionally I make quilts. Um, if you, you can, you can apply this, this method to a banner if you, if you want to, but I'm just going to show you how I would digitize it. I brought up, uh, I found a picture on Pinterest of a banner and I'm, I'm going to make it as a quilt square, a quilt in the hoop square. In other words, you do all the work in the hoop. So the first thing is I bring up the, the background picture and what I'm doing here is um, each of these sections is going to be a different piece of fabric. So I, I'm just outlining the section and choosing each one will have to be a different color uh, so that there will be a stop after each section is done. So I outline the, for the top section and with a blue because this is a sky and a little, it'll tell me then that I need to use a blue fabric. And now I'm outlining the second section and again I've chose a blue for that each of the blue, but a different blue so that there's a stop after each each one um, is sewn. And I'll show you how this gets sewn off too in a separate video. And so now I'm doing the third section. And again, this is a, th a, a third blue. Each one will be a different kind of blue. And I'm ignoring everything on top. Uh, it's When you do this kind of thing, you have to keep in mind the order that things are going to get sewn. So I'm going to start at the top and sew each of the background fabrics down and trim them off just like an applique and then sew the next piece and trim it off and sew the next piece. The wheat are going to be done last because they're on top of the whole background. Though I can, I can go ahead and do them, I just have to uh, resequence so that they sew last. So now, but the, the beginning section is just going to through each of these, each of these sections and uh, digitizing a line all around them so that they can be sewn down. I think that's the last sky section. No, there's one more sky section. You notice I have to go, the overlapping lines have to be sewn with each, with each section. Okay, I think that's all the sky. I'm going to bring up the background, put the background out of the way and see if I have everything. This is what I have so far, those, those sections. I put the background back up so I can finish. So now I'm going to start digitizing the hills. So I picked green for those because I'll be, to, to, just to tell me to use a green fabric. 
These are going to be piece quilts, so they'll be made up of whatever scrap material is around. But to look right, you want to use blue for the sky, green for the hills, and maybe yellow for the fields. It's hard to see, but there's a little piece right behind that piece of wheat that's a different hill. Right in there. Some other time I'll show you how to make a quilt square that's larger than the hoop. As I say, I'm not a quilter, but I do like to do it once in a while. Just want to check and make sure I have everything. Oh, I missed a section. When I'm done, I would usually go back and check, um, click on each section in the resequence box and make sure that I have all of them. First one, second one, third one, fourth one, sixth one. So I need to move one up. So now they're in the right order. That should be brown though, instead of green. Those should all be different browns.
No, actually, those are the hills. So, yeah, the other one should, was, should, was sky, and then these are hills. Okay, that's, I think there's three more sections to do, which is the field. Nope, one more hill yet. The only confusing part about this is to make sure that you have each section. One more set of hills and then I'm into the field. The bottom three section is field, it's flatter. So I selected it and then I turned it green. Now I'm going to do the next one. You spend a little time doing this, but it really, if you, you can do it, you can do it over and over again. I mean, once it's done, like any other design, you can sew it more than once. So if you're using this as a quilt block, you can use it you know, several times in one quilt. And they actually, I like doing quilt blocks this way rather than um, having to cut out pieces and sew them all together. I am not going to be cutting out all of these pieces. They're gonna get sewn down in the hoop and then just trimmed off like an applique. Okay, and one more different brown. And that will take care of the background.
I'm just checking the colors and the, the, making sure that I have everything. Now I could do several things next, but really those those hairs that come out of the um, the wheat they're going to be the next thing to be sewn um, on on the background, and then on top of them will be the fabric for the the wheat. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm just digitizing those lines. Just going up and back on each one so that each one is done twice. And I don't, you don't have to come back exactly on the line. That will give it more, um, there'll be more sewing then. If that's what you want this this quilt piece will have will not have any quilting done to it except these sew lines on the wheat the sew lines of each of the pieces of fabric and then um sew lines separating each of the pieces of fabric after um so but I'm not going to go in and fill in, do quilting on all of these sections. I could do that, and I can program the design to do that, and I will do that probably on another, on on another quilt square. But I'm not going to do it on this one. As far as I'm concerned, this will have enough sewing. And then each of these blocks can be taken and used with other blocks to form a quilt. So there's one. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the second ear of wheat and then the third. I know this has nothing to do with vestments, but I do have people who want to know how to digitize, and this is part of digitizing. Not everyone uses their embroidery programs for vestments the way I do. There's the second one. Now we just have one more. So for those of you who digitize occasionally, I like to put something else in to show you other ways you can use your program, like the lace making and doing Christmas ornaments.
from the techniques that you learn, both for the things like this, can also be used in other ways with investment making or anything else. As I say, you can use the same technique to make a banner for a pilgrimage or for a church or to hang outside your home. You would just want to do the same thing, but on a much larger scale. You would make a paper, paper um, guide, just like the gu guide that's underneath this that I'm working on top of. And then you would trace each of those sections onto fabric, cut them out, sew them on a backing fabric, just the same way that we're going to be sewing them down here. Uh, put them down on your, you can actually even use the paper uh, and sew on top of the paper. And then when you're all done, you just put a edge around it and loops to hang it. All right, so that's the hairs around the wheat. Now, the next thing that would need to be sewn would be the would be the lines separating the fabric sections. But uh, what I'm doing is I'm going to head, go ahead and digitize the fabric placement for the weed itself, and then I'll just resequence it. That way, um, at the end, I can do all the all the um, reorganization resequencing at one time. It really doesn't matter the order that you do things, though I always try to do it in the order that's going to get sewn. Um, but it does matter that you keep in mind what the order the things that will that the order that the things will have to be sewn because you have to resequence them. They have to be put in that order. So the background fabric gets sewn down first, then those hairs on the wheat, then the fabric on the wheat because it's on top of the background and it's also on top of those hairs. And then the the lines, either satin stitch, I'll be using stem stitch, to cover the raw edges where the fabric sections are together. And then you put the wheat down so that those, those lines are not running through your wheat. Your wheat will be on top of them. And then the stem stitch lines that hold down, that cover the raw edges of the, the wheat which is the final thing, and then the border. So that's the order that they have to be sewn in. So what I'm doing right now is there'll be, is the second to the last, third to the last thing. There's the, the thing that, there's one more thing that has to be in front of this, and that is the stem stitch lines or the satin stitch lines to cover the raw edges to those sky sections, hills, and field. And when I'm finished this, which will be very shortly, uh, uh, you'll understand what I'm talking about. I'm digitizing each of these wheat in the order that it's going to get sewn. The, fur the farthest back one will be sewn first then the second to the farthest, and now the front one. So I have gone around all of the wheat. And so now I'm ready to do the stem stitch line. And so I picked, digitize an open line, I picked stem stitch, and 
I'm going to go back up to the top and do the go over the line where the two fabrics are connected. I don't need the border edge, that'll be done separately. And I also decided after I started to do it that I needed it to be a little bit wider because it is covering a raw edge of fabric. And this is the next one. And these will all be done, I'm going to decide I'm going to do all of these with the same color thread. So that I'm not making color changes in between them, I'm simply uh, putting them down. I'm doing all the, I'm doing a blue color for all the sections that are blue in the sky. And I'll do a green stem stitch to cover the rises for all the green ones. And a gold or brown one to cover all the brown ones that are in the field. Okay, this is the last sky. No, I think there might be one more sky. The line between the sky and the hills is questionable whether you want to do it, and I've decided to do it blue. It could be done blue or green, but I think I decided to do it blue. I guess not. I'm doing it green, I guess. And now I'm doing green for the hills. I started to do the field green and I think looks like I'm changing my mind and I'm going to do it brown for the field. And now I'm resequencing them, moving them up um, to where they belong, which is after the fields, before the wheat, blue and then green and then brown.
All right, so now I'm getting in closer because I'm going to want to do the stem stitch around the wheat. And then I'll probably do black to set it off nice. And it doesn't matter what order it gets done in. I tend to like to do it in an order that I don't have to have too many jump stitches. So I'm coming up one side and down the other so I don't have to jump around. Now, when I get to the bottom of the wheat here, before I finish the stem, as long as I'm here so I won't have jump stitches, I'm going to switch over to a line stitch to redefine the, the inside of the wheat. I'm going to go over these sections where the kernels of, of wheat are. And yes, I've already gone over them with um, another color because of the hairs going out, but I really want them to be black. And Now, if I wanted the hairs to be black, which I don't, I could have just simply moved them to this point in the program and um, done it all as one thing. But I don't want them to be black. I want the wheat to be black, but not the hairs. And I have no idea if that's what you call them, but that's what I, um, I'm referring to them that way. Is that what, this, what they look like to me? And I'll do the same thing with each of the wheat. I'm doing this pretty fast and you can do it pretty fast and I but I would probably go in and 
do some minor editing to make sure that everything is is um, lined up that the for example that the stem stitch lines cover the raw edges that these stem stitch lines cover the hair lines that I put in. Nothing sticks out where it shouldn't, this shouldn't be seen. And that's why I usually, you usually sew something first, uh, a run, a runoff just to make sure that everything is working the way it's supposed to. There's the colors are the way you want them. The design is the way you want it. There's no mistakes. There's always mistakes. I started sewing this wheat, you notice, halfway up the stem. That was because that's where the other one ended and I didn't want to jump stitch. When I'm finished doing the wheat and I come down the one side, I can always come up the other side to the where I started. So I won't have jump stitches, but I still will have covered everything. And now switch back to stem stitch and finish the stem. I really recommend using stem stitch instead of satin if you can. It sews off much faster. It's not is distorting it doesn't cause the same kind of distortion but it doesn't work for everything and now I just need to go around the outside edge and put a border which is going to be a clicking each corner and I'm doing this with stem stitch too And it's and that's pretty much the design. I'll turn off the background. And I know it calls for a lot of colors, but that's because each color I needed a different color for each section, 
but I won't have to change thread colors. I'll just, it just puts stops in. You'll see when I sew this off. This is the digitizing part of it. The sewing part is a different step. So I selected it all. I'm not sure why I did that. I'm just looking it over carefully. Oh, I know what I'm looking at. I'm looking to make sure that everything is within the red line uh, because I did do the border on the outside edge and that border line can be, um, can't be over the red line. That's why I selected it all and grouped it so that if I need to move something, I won't, I can just drag it inside the border. <clears throat> 